uh, but I'm grateful to be able to share this time with you. And as we are preparing to receive another year, sometimes I wonder what is the Lord that is going to come. Um, personally, and as a church family, we have experienced in the past week a lot of uh, COVID in, uh, people infected by COVID and uh, a dear friend was hospitalized today and it's just like, okay, here we go again in this wave of uncertainty and, and just uh, hard times for so many people. And so my question for each one of you is, what, where did you turn for assurance and affirmation in times like we are experiencing right now where what do you do how what do we do to prepare for 2021 and if you, any of you want to put something in comment something in the chat uh you're welcome to do that we would love to connect even through the chat uh since we cannot see most of you but it's it's just I've been thinking a lot about it, and uh, I've been just just wondering, okay, how do we prepare? How do how do we get ready for 2021? Where do we turn for stability? Where do we turn for something that will be steady and unchangeable? Because everything else seems to be changing so quickly. Um, as a matter of fact, we have had this 29. 2020, we have had the, a blessing to have my oldest daughter with us in her family. They are missionaries in Guatemala. And as a matter of fact, her husband is from Canada. But they were they came here in January to for um, to receive to for the birth of my third granddaughter from them, and she was born in February 12th. But since then, COVID they couldn't go back to Guatemala. So they, it has been my blessing to have had them here. But I was share, I was just talking and, and just with her today and she was just sharing how, even though now there's the end of the year and they might go back at the end, at the beginning of next year in January, is this, this all this commotion again in her, in her, in her, in her heart, in her emotions. And she was, we were just talking, how do I prepare? How do I prepare for what's ahead? And I was just sharing with her how uh, in preparation for this meeting with you guys, I was just thinking the same question, Lord, how do we get ready? How do we prepare uh, to face the uncertainties that we are, we're still surrounding, surrounded by, right now and um and when we need to face and in, in, in kind of process the welcoming of 2021 just thinking that we're carrying so many disappointments and so many things that have been a burden for our hearts so many pains so many uh, weariness in our spirit but as i was just thinking about all that I heard, I felt the whisper of the Lord reminding me that he is our hope. And he reminded me that promise in Isaiah 30, 41, that he gives strength to those who grow tired and become weary. He increases the strength of those who are weak. And he renews the strength for those who wait with hope in the Lord. So the issue here is hope. How do we carry on to 2021 guarding hope? And hope is not just a word. It's not just an expectation. Hope is a person. In a person whose name is Jesus, he is the hope that we carry and he has promised that he will not leave us. He will not leave us alone. He will not forget about us. He is walking with us. Even though sometimes we think he's, we've lost it somewhere, but he's still in the midst of it all, making sense of our lives. So hope is the great, stabilizer it steadied us in, in times of uncertainty and fear not because we know how things will turn out but because we know we can trust the hope the god of hope 
He's trustworthy. He, he is trustworthy. And this is, this is the word that I have for you guys. Um, hope. How do we carry hope? How do we care for hope? How, we, how do we get hope? How do we nurture hope? And uh, so that's what we're going to be talking about right now in this night. And uh, one thing that we need to guard is our hope. So how do we do that? How do we turn to the one thing that will bring stability to our lives? It's by speaking truth. It's speaking the truth of God. And we need to go back to the things that are not changeable. To the, uh, and I was talking to my daughter, right, as, as before the meeting, and I said, you just need to think about the goodness of the Lord, the things that are not changeable, the things that are always the same, that will build the foundation for, upon which we will build our future, and we will just, just face uh, the uncertainties of the future. And one of them, and uh, I, I'm grateful that ja Jelly was just speaking over and over in her prayer, and is the fact that we are daughters. We are daughters, and he chose us. He set us apart for himself. He, and, and I love that, we didn't choose him, he chose us us and as I was listening to Jeller's testimony and she was just sharing how um, the beautiful evidence of God in her life and how he found her when she thought she was lost and she was never lost from his sight but just the fact that he chose us even though when we were too weak to save ourselves he chose us and he set us apart and appointed us to, to bear fruit and this I love this he set you apart to bear fruit, much fruit, and fruit that lasts. And also in this scripture, which is in John 15, 16, it says that he also not only set you apart to bear fruit, but also to, to prepare you so that anything that you will pray to the Father, he will answer. And it is in this setting of these things that are unchangeable of God that we can come with confidence to the Father. And let me tell you, what do we do with the brokenness? What do we do with these disappointments? What do we do with the divine delays? What do we do with the brokenness of hearts? We, because life is hard. Life is hard. We live between the Garden of Eden that we were created there for perfection and the garden that is going to be restored at the end of Revelations. But, but we, in the middle of it, in the middle of the story, life is hard. And it get, it, 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 our hearts get broken. But how do we do with it? How, how do we deal with these disappointments and, and divine delays and brokenness and unmet expectations? And one of the things that the Lord was pointing out to me a couple of days ago is just you come to the Father. Come boldly to the throne of grace. You come to the Father. You come and explain to him. You just tell him how you feel. And one of the verses that I really love, it's in, in Job, uh, in chapter 23, 23rd. And many of you probably know uh, the story of Job, but he has had uh, a lot of brokenness in his, in his life. His children die. He got sick. He lost everything. He went bankrupt. He lost, lost everything. But in chapter 23, he's saying, what would I do if I could come to the courts of the Lord and I would present my case before him? Do you think he will just quiet me and tell me, hey, you don't know what you're saying. Just you don't understand what I'm doing. You just need to accept it. And he basically says, no, I can come before the Lord and I can tell him how I feel. And guess what? He's not going to tell me to be quiet. He is going to validate how I feel because he understands that it is hard. But he will let me know that he hears me. And even though I don't see him, he knows where I am. And after he has tried me as gold, I will come out. Perfect. I will come out out of this trial. 
and he will fulfill his purpose in me. That chapter gives me so much confidence that no matter how I am feeling, no matter whether I am processing the right things in the right way according to his truth, no matter how I am, I can come boldly to my father and explain to him how I am. And um, I was sharing this conversation with my daughter and she said that specifically today, she said, mom, I felt depressed for some kind of way because in the past, she was telling me, in the past, uh, every time around Christmas, I'm away from home. She's in Guatemala. And she said, I have felt that I, this sense of loneliness, this sense of just being lost away from my family. And I said, but you are here. And it's sometimes the Lord allows these cycles of pain, of depression, of, of just cycles of, of just these feelings of being lost so that we can face them with the truth. So I was encouraging her to, to talk to the Lord about it. Lord, here I am again, and I'm feeling this. Come to the table, sit with the Father, be confident. We be, have this confidence that you can come to him as you are and you can tell him what you feel. And even though you might not hear him clearly explaining to you what is it that you're going through, even in the mystery, the Lord is in control and the Lord will lead you. The Lord will sustain you. The Lord will give you hope. So this is something that I've been, ta- I've been thinking about it. And in Psalm 23, do you probably know when the verse says, I think it is verse 5, when it says that the Lord sets a table before our enemies. And that, what that implies is that he's again inviting you to come and let's have this conversation in the middle of the hard times. Let's come, sit at your place because you are a daughter and you can come and take your place. You come and take your place at the table and let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. And he says that he has set a table before us. It's a table of intimacy. It's a table of revelation. We were just talking with Jelly how in the midst of all her process of finding her way back to the heart of the father, he, she began to, to receive this revelation of who God was for her in every season. And I think that is the most important thing of all this. If, if I don't know what revelation from God have you, you guys have received in this 2020, but one thing that the Lord was, was speaking clearly to my heart is that he was my redeemer. My redeemer. That The redeemer is the one who buys you back and restores what belongs to you. And I think the Lord wants to remind us today that we are daughters, that he chose us, that we have a hope because we have an inheritance as daughters and we have a power that is working within us, is the power of his spirit, that he will not leave us broken. He will sustain us. And, but you know what? I wish I could tell you there is a magic formula. Just go to the Lord. The Lord will quickly restore you. But it's not. It is a process. It takes time. Fruit takes time. We are in a society that is used to the microwave mentality. We want immediate results with less effort. And if pain is not involved, it's even better. But that's not how life is in this side of eternity. And we can see the example of Jesus. We, he learned obedience by why he suffered. But there's one thing that I love, and it's the fact that in the night in which he, Jesus, was going to be betrayed, he says that, the Bible says that he knew where he came from, and he knew where he was going. And because he knew where he came from, that's identity, and he knew his future, he was able to 
serve even his enemy, the one who's going to betray him. He said that he took away his clothes and served them. He washed their feet. He fed them. He, and he gave thanks. So that tells me that the way that we can endure what we are going through and that we will, the uncertainties of the future and, and all the trials and the tribulation is for us to remember that we are daughters. As, and as daughters, we have a place at the table that the Lord has set before us in front of our enemies, in front of all those things that are not going the way we want. But we can come to the table and we can tell the Lord. We can say, Father, I feel frustrated. Father, I don't know what to do. I am anxious. And it's there that the Lord is going to feed us and gives us everything he has said before us because he will not leave us as orphans. And I just want to remind you, as we talk about hope, one of the things the unchangeable of the things is his word. We need to go back to his word. And as a matter of fact, I, I've, I said, if I can give you three things, how do we welcome 2021? I'm going to tell you it's all about the way you handle your hope. Hope, which is your confidence in the goodness of the Lord. And the number one, if you want to write this down, number one is exercise your hope. Endure patiently and accept the restrictions that you have, you have been placed in and flourish in the middle of them. What do you mean? Let me tell you something. When the Lord tells us that he, the plans that he has, this is one of the unchangeables. And the Lord reminded me to tell you that the plans that the Lord has for you are plans of good and not of evil. Plans of hope and a future. And that is something that is, it's a declaration. It's not, it's something that he's declaring or us. It's a promise that I don't know if you have memorized it, but I have memorized it for a long, long time ago. I love to declare it. But it was until I was studying for this meeting that I realized that the context of that promise speaks volumes. And what has happened in, in the chapter 29 of Jeremiah is that the people have been, people of Israel have been taken captive to Babylon. And it is in Babylon when the Lord is sending them this letter through the prophet Jeremiah and he's telling them, I have sent you there, but my eyes are open you to do good to you. My eyes are open you and I'm going to do good to you. And it was interesting because many people, as we have heard, don't worry, 2020, it's going to be better than before. We're going to go back to where we were and things are going to get better soon. But what if not? What if the, this, the plan of the Lord is going as planned and it has been intended so that we turn to him? What if things are not going to go back to the way we were? What are we going to do if they don't? What we're going to do is what the Lord tells the people. And if you turn to, with me to Jeremiah chapter 29, I would like for you to see this. It is such a beautiful chapter. And it is in, chapter, in Jeremiah 29, and we're going to start begin reading in, in verse 10. And it says, this is what the Lord says. When Babylon's 70 years are over, I will come to you and I will keep my promise to you and bring you back to this place. What has happened, like I said before, the people of, have been taken captive and some prophets were raising up and saying, don't worry, the Lord is going to bring, bring us back to Jerusalem. You don't have to worry. Soon the Lord will bring us back. So Jeremiah sent this letter with a word from the Lord. It says, not until the appointed time comes, I will not bring you back to Jerusalem. But let me tell you that even now, in captivity, my eyes are open you 
to do good to you. And look, listen to what he says. I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. They are plans for peace and not disaster. But let's remember where they are. They are in captivity. They have been taken against their will in Babylon to Babylon. But the Lord is reassuring them the plans that I have for you are plans of peace and not disaster, plans to give you a future filled with hope. Then you will call to me and you will come and pray to me and I will hear you. When you look for me, you will find me. When you hold heavily seek, seek me, I will let you find me, declares the Lord. And I will bring you back from captivity, and I will gather you from all the nations and places where I've scattered you. Isn't that amazing? It brings me hope. That no matter the restrictions that we have been placed because of the pandemic, no matter so many people have been able have not been able to see their own families, have not been able to gather in the house of worship. I don't know how it is in Canada, but for us, we're going back to the restrictions that we had before, and more people are getting. Um, COVID and, and there's it's a lot of uncertainties and a lot of restrictions coming back. But the Lord is telling us, like he has told these people in captivity, don't worry because my eyes are upon you and I will take care of you. I have plans for good and a disaster and I have plans to give you hope and a future. So what do we do? Seek my face. Seek me. You will find me. This is the key. The Lord is inviting us to come and sit at the table as daughters who have the right of an inheritance. For now, his presence, the revelation of who he wants to be along the process. And that is the hope that we carry, that we will see him if we find him if we seek for him, we, we, we will find him. And so this is the way we strengthen our hope that we endure patiently these restrictions that you have to wear a mask, that you cannot meet, that you have to, all these type of restrictions. You know what, I was, I was talking to some of the ladies in my congregation and so many of them, because they are up in age, they have been alone for months. Alone meaning not being able to go anywhere, being away from their families. But so many of them have said to me, but you know what? I can cook and I can send food for the people who are sick. I grab my, my cell phone and I send messages and I have become an intercessor. So I am taking my captivity, but I'm using it wisely. I am finding the Lord and I'm, I'm, the Lord is guiding me. It's really finding my even in the midst of my restrictions. It's really finding the things that I can do because there's one thing for sure. The Lord is with me. And uh, it gives me so much hope, uh, especially this passage, because we don't know what the future ho holds for us. But there's one thing for sure. The Lord is inviting us to flourish in our restrictions. No matter the uncertainties of the future, no matter the restrictions, this, this chapter 21 is an example of what the Lord is speaking to his people because he is the sovereign God. The second thing that the Lord is talking about, about nature, our hope, is to nurture it. We cannot say, okay, we're not, we cannot live in what the Lord did to us or spoke to us yesterday. We have to come and gather a manna daily. Hope is a daily thing. Hope is a communion with a person. And hope is given to us, as we have seen here, in the midst of a lot of commotion and chaos. Why? Because hope is an stabilizer and his name is Jesus. And so as we nurture that hope, as we allow, like right now, we are 
carving in the midst of all the things and responsibilities at, of, that we have as mothers, as wives, um, as daughters, we're carving a time, we're making space for a nurture, for, to nurture our hope, to feed, feed on the goodness of the Lord, to, to receive revelation. To, and again, sometimes we come not really with a heart that is full of revelation. Sometimes we just come to him broken, desperate, depressed. And he welcomes us anywhere we come. Why? Because we are daughters and we have a good, good father that receives us and understands us. He validates you. He understands that it's hard, but it, he also wants to reveal to you what you have, what you need in him. So, the, so to be restored in this communion face to face. And again, I love this example of sitting at the table. Come and sit at the table with the Father. Remember, when you read the context of Psalm 23, he's walking through the valley of death. And, and he is being led to green, green pastures. And he says that even in, even in the midst of the Lord discipline, discipline, he will restore you. He will refresh you. He will set this table before your enemies. And everything about this psalm implies trust in your shepherd. Trust in your shepherd's heart. Trust in the heart of the Father. Trust that he longs to see your face. He longs to have communion with you. He longs for you to come and explain to him and tell him and just say as it is, Lord, I feel bad. I feel frustrated. I feel like my daughter. She said, I felt depressed today. In the midst of being home with my family, with my husband, with my girls, with my parents, I felt depressed. Why? Because it is it's a cycle. It's something in their mind that needs to be restored, that needs to be refreshed, that needs to be healed. And I say, okay, bring it to the Lord. Tell him, Lord, you know what? Today I felt depressed. And so I want you to tell me what is this cycle that I fall into every Christmas, even though I'm here where I want it to be all the time. What is it, Lord? Break the chains. Show me, show me, show me what to do. And I, I'm reminded, I love Jeremiah. I love this prophet. He's a mighty man of God. But let me tell you something. He is as human as you and me. I love Jeremiah, especially this. I don't know if you're familiar with this chapter, chapter 15. And uh, it, is, it is, in a way, one chapter when he, we can see that this mighty man of God was kind of having suicidal thoughts. He was frustrated. His expectations of the people turning back to the Lord after all the warnings and all the prophecies and all the words that he has uh, tell the people, receiving from the Lord and tell the people, they just were rebellious. They did not understand. So he felt frustrated. He felt overwhelmed. He felt that he had no purpose. And, and there's this chapter in, in uh, there's this verse in chapter 15 of Jeremiah when he says, Lord, are you going to be like, like this mirage, this this something that you sound so good, but you will never come through? Are you like this water that is never reachable? I cannot, I can just see it. It's coming, but I cannot drink from it. Are you like this wound that will never heal? Is that who you are to me? Because my heart is pain. It's in pain. I'm depressed. I wish my mother would have avoided me. This is the mighty mind of God. But let me tell you what the Lord says in, in the verse 19. And he says, if you return to me, there's another verse in that version that says, if you change the way you're thinking, and you know, return to me and change the way you're thinking means if you repent. If you repent of your doubts, if you repent of that attitude of thinking, I have failed you. 
If you repent, then I will use you and I will put my words in you. And let me tell you one more thing. Do not let you do not turn to the people that surround you. Let them turn to you. How? By choosing the beauty among the ashes. By choosing what is good, by changing your focus. Guys, this is key. Change, let's change the focus. And you know, my daughter was telling me today, you know, mom, I was just thinking about all the bad things that I experienced in the past. It was, I wasn't even living the present. I wasn't even paying attention and being grateful. Man, I am with my family. My kids are good. I, I'm here in the place where I've been wanting to be all the past Christmases, all the past Decembers. But now I, my focus was in the pain of the past. So I am telling you, there is a way in which the Lord is speaking to us. How do we keep hope? It is by take, changing, repenting from our doubts, repenting from our bitterness of the unmet expectations, repenting from the uh, bitterness of the divine delays that the Lord seems to be absent from our story, but he's fully present because he's a God who's faithful and never changes. So once we repent and we turn and we change that focus, instead of looking at the things that we lack, we begin to seek. And sometimes we're going to have to look really hard. But if we begin to seek the good among the ashes, the beauty among the ashes, we will find the goodness of the Lord. And the Lord will restore our hope. And not only that, let me tell you something else that the Lord tells Jeremiah. He says that after you change your focus, you repent from your doubts, you begin to seek the good things among the bad things, and you change the way you speak, I am going to use you. And he says, and you're going to become like a strong wall. Nobody will, no, nobody will conquer you. And I will fight for you. I will fight for you. And ladies, this is what we need. The plan is laid out for us. The examples are throughout the Bible. How do we do this? How do we keep hope alive? And we, we endure the circumstances. We go through them with a mentality, okay, Lord, you have set me here. You have planted me here. And you know, in Jeremiah 29, the, the Lord tells the people in captivity, plant gardens. You are there for a season. I have planted you there with a purpose. And the purpose is that you will know me in the midst of this captivity, but I want you to use your time wisely and I want you to be fruitful. I want you to change the environment around your city. I want you to pray for your city. I want you to be light in the midst of darkness. You are the salt of the earth. So be who you have called you to be in the midst of captivity. Let me shine through you. And this is how we endure, how we exercise hope, how we nurture hope, how we, we sit at the table with the Father. We are honest with him and we feed of his truth that is unchangeable. There's not, a, there's not a magic formula, girls. We just have to do the work. And lastly, how do we strengthen hope? by being obedient in the areas the Lord is speaking to you. It's specifically in the areas in which nobody's looking, but you know he's speaking to you. And he usually will dare you to come out of your comfort zone, to experience his dynamics, his power. He will stretch you so that you will know that it's not your own strength, but his, because when you are weak and you say, I cannot do this, Lord, is when you totally rely on his strength and in his goodness. 
and he glorifies to give strength to the weak. So this is how we do this. This is how we face 2021. This is how we face every single day in whatever condition, whatever situation we are. It's the same plan. And I love that. I love that because the Lord is reshaping, remaking his people. There's one, there's a couple of verses that I absolutely love. Those are my favorite ones. And um, they're Micah 420. I'm going to read them to you from the message version. And I absolutely love this. Because remember, we're talking about the people who are in captivity, the people who were taken from Jerusalem to Babylon. And I love how the Lord is threading this this thread throughout the whole Bible about redemption, reminding us that he is our redeemer. That means he's buying us back. He's purchasing us and he's redeeming even the bad things and the bad experiences that we have had. And listen to what it says in uh, Micah 410, the message version. It says, what you lost in Jerusalem, remember, these people were taken from Jerusalem to Babylon. And I don't know what you have lost this year. What have you lost? But he says, what you lost in the city of peace, this is Jerusalem. This is what Jerusalem means. Means What you lost in the city of peace, it could be your expectations. It could be your dream. It could be the life that you had or the life that you envisioned. And this is what it says. What you lost in Jerusalem, the city of peace, will be found in Babylon, the place of your oppression, the place of your difficulty, and the place of hardship. Isn't that amazing? We are thinking that once COVID is removed from the equation, once the restrictions are, are gone, then we're going to get a life. No. The Lord is promising the plans of hope and the future in the midst of where we are. Why? Because he's there with us. And his eyes are upon you for God to give you a hope and to give you a future. So you might as well start planting your garden. or Meaning, do what is it that you can do in the midst of your restriction. Redefine yourself. Do something different or do something. Shine just in the midst of darkness. You are the light of the world. And listen to what it says in Jeremiah 24. I will set my eyes upon you for good. And I will bring them back to this land and I will build them up and not tear them down. And I will plant them and not pluck them up. And I will give them a heart to know that I am the Lord and they shall be my people and I will be their God for they shall return to me with this whole heart. And where are these people? In captivity. Among many restrictions. But the Lord has set them there to win their hearts as we are now. He's trying to get our attention. He's trying to seat us at the table because there's so much more he wants to reveal to us. Could we yield? Could we allow them to feed us of everything he has said before us? Could we stop resisting what he has for us and open our eyes to find him in the middle of what is, what is not according to us? But maybe it is all of him. In Micah chapter 4, verses 6 through 5, I will round up all the hurt in homeless. Everyone I have bruised or banished. I will transform the batter into a company of the elite. I will make a strong nation out of the long lost. A showcase, an exhibit of God's rule in action. We know what's coming. Because if you have read the word, we know that the days ahead are 
terrible, our, our dark days. But the Lord has promised his people that they, though there is dark around us, over us his light will shine. And he's remaking us. And he, we are going to be the evidence of a God that has chosen to dwell among his people. They do not know, and this is Micah, still, they don't know that this is the making of God's people, that they are wheat being trashed, gold being refined, and on your feet, daughters of Zion, be trashed of chaff, be redefined of dross. I am remaking you into in people invincible, into God's juggernaut. That means a powerful force to crush the godless people. And you will bring their plunder as holy offerings to God and their wealth to the master of the earth. So what do you say? So what do you say? Lord, remake me. Do what you want. Take my weakness. Take my brokenness. Take my restrictions and just do it all, Lord. Fill me up. Fill me with, fill my voice and my brokenness and just fill me with everything that you have prepared for me. Because I'm going to take my place at the table. I am going to strengthen my hope. I'm going to exercise my hope and by enduring patiently. And if I am going to flourish in my restrictions, I'm going to nurture my hope by sitting at the table, by having this intimacy with you, explaining to you, just opening my heart to you, but allowing you to fill my heart with all that you are. And I'm going to strengthen my hope by reading the word, by feeding on your promises, by feeding in the knowledge of who you are. Captivate my heart, Lord. Give me strength. Renew my hope. Let me source in winds of evil as you have promised for those who are weary. Because I am one. I am weak. But you are strong. So this is, girls, this is how we will face 21, the year 21 and everything else in between. By exercising our hope, enduring patiently, accepting those restrictions, but flourishing in them, by nurturing our hope, sitting at the table of my father, taking my place as a daughter, and feeding on the word, feeding on that daily manna. And strengthen and hope by being obedient, specifically in those areas in which I am weak. And the Lord will fulfill his purpose in us. Amen. I do want to uh, just call upon the Lord and just in one heart, in one agreement, open our hearts to him. We open our hearts, Father. We open our, our, our spirit, Holy Spirit, to your presence. And we just say we want more. And I know that to receive more, we need to empty ourselves of whatever is holding us back, or whatever uh, things that have uh, doubts or anything that it's, it's been in a way of receiving, Lord, as a good, good Father. We repent from our doubts. We repent from our frustrations. And we ask, Lord, we ask for the peace that passes all understanding. We ask for the strength of your spirit in the midst of our weakness. We welcome our weakness because it is an invitation for an exchange, the greatest exchange of our weakness for your strength. So, Father, we thank you that you have not left us orphans, that you have chosen us, that you have called us, and you call us your own. And you are faithful, Lord to finish and to fulfill what you promised in us. So I ask for an increase of the revelation of your spirit, that you may give us eyes to see and to find you in the middle 
of our circumstances, in the midst of the chaos, in the midst of the loneliness, in the midst of whatever it is that our circumstances, our present circumstances are, you are that I am. You are present with us through it all. And that is our portion that cannot be taken away from us. That is the reason that we can flourish wherever we are. You promised that you will never leave us, that you will be with us until the end of times. That changes everything. So I'm asking Abba that you may open our hearts and unlock our minds and our understanding to find you in our presence. You are enough for us. Your mercies are new every morning. And that is why we carry on with hope. Hope is Jesus, our hope of glory, our present, our reality. The spirit of God, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel, counsel and might. The spirit of revelation. This is who you are. And this is what we have. And we thank you for that. And to you who are faithful and able to do above and beyond more than we ask, and more than we think, to you be the glory forever and ever. And thank you for this time. And thank you for the kisses of your word that word revealed that changes us and marks us for the next season of life. Thank you. Amen. <laughs>